Okay, welcome to our Ayr of Shabbat Parashat class. Parashat Vayigash, it is also Asara B'Tebet. We'll keep that in mind today. But perhaps the most dramatic and emotional moment in Koha Torah Kula, in the entire Torah, I think if you took a vote, mm -hmm. uh, that might be uh, one of the top 10 or three or number one. This could be the winner. And we all know what I'm referring to, of course, the revelation of Yosef to his brothers in our parasha. And that's nothing surprising. And we know the storyline. The question, I believe, is why did the Torah have to describe the reaction, the emotion, and the shock? And if we just turn for a moment and let's uh, view the language and terminology to see what I'm talking about, to Perek Memhe, chapter 45, and Pasuk Gima. We can start from Pasuk Bet, just to get a head start. Yosef removed everyone from his presence. He called out in a crying voice. Everybody eventually found out about this. Pasuk Gima. I am Yosef, is my father still alive? Let's leave aside for now the question as to why he has to add on to his revelation a inquiry as to whether his father is alive because it seems that throughout this entire episode he should know full well that he's alive. But in any case, here is the reaction. And his brothers could not answer him because they were afraid of his presence. They were in shock. They felt fear. And they were dumbfounded. They could not respond. Now, that's uh, given all the circumstances, something that we would assume probably would have happened. And um, it's something that we're not surprised that the Torah is revealing to us. Again, the question is, is that an important note? Now, we know the Torah Kedusha skips 99.99% .99 of details uh, in history and anyone, the given lives and of our great uh, heroes of the past and all the episodes and just reveals to us the minute details that it wants to reveal. So why reveal to us here that they were dumbfounded and shocked and could not answer him? And I believe that the answer to this, and Hakamim really tell us very directly the answer to this, incorporates powerful personal life lessons for every individual Jew. Well, the Peshat here is, as we said, absolute shock. But let's try to elaborate on that shock. Um, when somebody is um, considering what may happen to him, Sometimes he focuses in on what he wants to happen and not what he doesn't want to happen. So therefore, what is undesirable occurs, he's surprised because he set himself up for disappointment, perhaps. Sometimes there's only a smaller percentage that what's going to happen actually happened. Maybe it was a 20 or 10% chance. So he didn't really believe or consider it. And therefore, when it happens, again, he's surprised. You know, people having a boy or a girl, I don't know what I'm going to have. I had a girl. I'm shocked. Why are you shocked? It's 50%. It's not really a shock element there. But that's the way people are. But when there is a revelation, a fact that is so unlikely to happen, that it seems beyond the pale of reality around us, one absolutely rules it out in his mind, not just the forefront of his mind, but in, in the depth of his thinking, of his consciousness. It has no chance whatsoever. We feel right now, as we stand today, that there is no chance for a building that's collapsed to jump back up and reconstruct itself. I don't give my mind any reason, any possibility. I leave no room for the most remote possibility of this occurring. And therefore, if it occurs, I'm an absolute shock. So, Ahay Yosef, even though 
they did not kill Yosef and they sent him away. But he sent him away many, many years ago, over two decades ago, to the big bad world. But much more than that. The fact that right now they are dealing with a viceroy, a sub-leader of an entire nation, one of the most powerful men in the world, to put those two and two together, the remote possibility that he's still living, and also that he's leading the country is not even a possibility. And therefore, when you put all that together, when we don't leave room in consciousness for uh, that, that, that possibility, the odds are stacked so far against it that it doesn't even exist in your mind. Thus, the result is shock. And this is pure, unadulterated, plain and simple, clear as day, shock. They have no way to respond because they're not even right now registering and comprehending what they just witnessed and what they just heard. Okay. But as she says, they're shocked. They were afraid, not just shocked. Why they were afraid of him, says the Torah. She says, because of shame, because of shame, because right now they're faced with their past and they are now eye to eye with their iniquity, with their, with their, with the tragic sin, with their egregious act. When one has to face himself, and one cannot escape their wrongdoing, even though they were on the path to repentance. And they were very conscious throughout this episode, which is probably one of the objectives of this entire scenario, by Kadosh Baruch Hu, and manipulated by Yosef as well, to bring them that consciousness and start that process to repentance. However, when you have to face your sin in the face, your wrongdoing, when it replays itself and you're looking right at it, that's terribly shameful and disgraceful. To an individual, and that's why they were afraid. Okay, this is all the simple surface level understanding. Hakamim take us to a different place. And by the way, just on that shock level, we can just turn a few more pages. We won't right now, but we know that, of course, Yaakov Abinu, his father, went through the very same phenomenon when it was revealed to him as well. And there it actually expresses the shock more clearly and simply in it says his heart and there's different uh, ways of explaining this his heart stopped, his heart skipped a beat uh, he was in complete denial, he went into actual shock uh, because Yaakov of all people because he was completely in the dark here really had no reason to give this any, um, any chance of occurring okay, but Hakamim take this to a different place. Hachamim take this and the reason why the Torah has to tell us um, of, their, of their reaction and describe it is because the Torah was speaking to us. And there is a Gemara, famous Gemara, I'll say the word famous here, and Midrash, because it's, it's used in different contexts. And spoken over by Hachamim, Baalei Musar in, in, in different settings. And that is as follows. First, I'll give you the Gemara, then the Midrash, and then we'll speak. The Gemara Masekh Hagiga, the Abdalad Amubet says as follows. Rabbi Azar, this is Rabbi Azar the Amora, Rabbi Azar ben Pedat, Hebrutav, Rabbi Anan, leader of his generation. Kimalteh, that Gemara was, was speaking about certain Pesukim and Tanakh that made certain Hachamim emotional. And here it says, Kimalteh lahay kirad bacheh. When it got to this pasuk, the Bil Azal would cry, and it's the it's segment pasuk segment that we just we're focusing and analyzing right now. They couldn't respond because of their fear. Says the Bil Azal, Can you imagine if this is the reaction to the rebuke of a person? The rebuke of God, how much more? Where is he going with this? Um, we're going to read the Midrash, but before we do, let's just uh, parenthetically take a time out before we do and try to um, relate to the word rebuke. As far as I see in the actual surface layer of the text, we don't see 
a rebuke from Yosef to the brothers. However, the Torah Tamima here explains, this is somewhat alluded to by the Sforno as well, that in that peculiar addition to the revelation is the rebuke. Yosef told his brothers in Pasuk Gimel, Ani Yosef, and then added the inquiry, Ta'od Abihai, and explained the Torah Tamima. That is the rebuke. That is the rebuke. Mm-hmm. After all the, what we call in Arabic, the waja'arat, the difficulties, the anguish, the sadness, the mourning, years of crying and missing and feeling depressed over his son. Is it possible my father He's is still, still alive, alive after all you put him through? Okay, that's the rebuke. Nabi Azad would see this pasuk. He would say, if that's the rebuke of man, can you imagine the reaction to it? Can you imagine the rebuke of God? And he would cry. However, the Midrash is more elaborate and I would say more dramatic and emotional about this. Bereshit Rabbah is actually two different hakamim that convey this. And I'll read you the second one. It's not going to be Azad, but he preceded the other one by a few hundred years. It's the Bi Azad bin Azariah, the famous Tana. Ama. Some have the version in Gersa, Vailan, Vailan, Aive, woe is to us from the day of judgment, woe unto us from the day of rebuke. If Yosef, a mere human, made of flesh and blood, upon rebuke of his brothers, they had no response. They had no possible uh, retort to the words of Yosef, and they stood dumbfounded, speechless. Then says the Bila Azab Azira, Kadosh Baruchu, Shuhu Dayan, Ubaldin, Yosheva Kisedin, God, who is the judge, he's the plaintiff, he's the jury, he's everything. And he sits on his throne of judgment. And individually, individually, uh, throughout the life of a person, but all the more so at the end of 120, judges a man. How much more so? 1,000, 1 million fold, if we can say such a thing, that we will not be able to stand before and withstand that rebuke. It is so powerful. It is so daunting of an idea that according to the Midrash and the Gemara, and I'll take it a step further, according to the Kliyakad, who explains the Midrash, that this, based on what Abil Azar and Abil Azar and Azar are telling us, mm-hmm. is the reason that the Torah insisted on expounding upon and describing their reactions and their feeling and their perspective. Speechlessness, shock, because the Torah wanted to tell, speak to us directly, the individual. And right now, take an opportunity. This is a teachable moment by the Torah to tell every single Jew, please be conscious. Everyone pays the piper. There is a time of accountability. Look at yourself and the brothers. You can only imagine, because now we can relate to it. After Parashat Vayeshev and Vikes and Avayigash, what they are thinking, how shocked they really are. My sons, my daughters, my friends tell us the Hachamim. This is only a tiny example. This is a speck of a demonstration as to what true reality will look like and sound like after 120. How are we to face HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Explains the Kli Akar. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who presents before us every, every word, every thought, every action, replay, as we say. Rewind. Let's go over the videotape, as they say. And then we'll sign on our verdict based on all of that. Wow. And we sit in an interview and we have to answer questions. And we say, well, he asks, what about that? Oh, yeah, well, then what about that? And how could you do that? And our response, we hope not. 
but quite possibly could be mm-hmm. speechless. absolutely speechless, dumbfounded, and with nothing to possibly say. We don't want to be in that position. We're not perfect, and everyone will have to pass through some form of judgment. But can we at least be conscious of this faithful and dramatic moment of the brothers of Yosef? How about every day of our lives, even? And this is what Hachamim are begging us at this point, to not ever have to be put in this position large scale. Can we mitigate the, the busha? And the and the, and the and the disgrace and embarrassment of that day in the future, can we minimize the lack of response that we'll have? Can we have some damage control, please? Let's think about this. Let let this moment be a guide for us. And of course, we have to operate in our lives not out of fear of God only, but really out of love of God and focus on the positive. But when thoughts of wrongdoing come up, how much of a motivation should this be for us? a source of focus in our lives. One last thought, one last thought. And this gets back to the Pesha and the idea of Shah. And in order to understand this, I want to ex- go take you back, not to the father of Yosef, but to the grandfather of Yosef. And that is Hak Abinu. And we know the scene, and we've spoken about it before in this class, of Yaakov deceiving his father and getting the Berachot, and then Asav coming back in and getting and going for his beracha when yeah yeah his heart was oh. poor of vision, and he said, "Who are you?" I'm Isav. Isav just came. When he told him, "This was Isav." Finally, hits him, and it says in the Torah, "Vayehara yis heart harada gedola ad meod." At that moment, he was gripped with an awesome fear. Torah is not mincing words, mm-hmm. and we've explained in the past. Because at that moment, Yishak understood, among other things, that his vision, his perspective, the way he saw things uh, into a, in a great percentage of his life and his, the life of entire life of his children and sons was off to a certain extent. In retrospect, what was in front of his face and should have been clear was not, and he saw it not for what it was. And that was terrifying to him. As the brothers of Yosef heard and saw that revelation, all of a sudden what hit them was all this time during these days and weeks, the anguish that we felt, the experience that we had standing in front of what we thought was something, a leader, a harsh dictator, a certain position, predicament to be in. The truth was right in front of our noses we couldn't see it. We were blind to it because God chose or we chose to blind ourselves. It was really Yosef all this time. When a person sometimes is honest enough to come to terms with the fact that the way he or she is seeing things is not what's real. And there is a truth in front of one's face that we sometimes rationalize and don't allow ourselves to see the truth. For various reasons, eventually, and as that Hashem, if the eye-opening day of truth comes, that we're honest enough to actually see it, it would also it will also be a terrifying day, as we'll see in retrospect that for the past months or years or decades or maybe a lifetime, the truth was right in front of us, and yet we chose to ignore it. Let us never have to be in that terrifying position. And never feel the remorse in retrospect of choosing to live in denial and being blinded by what is really a Kadash Baruch Hu, a set of, of truths that he is, puts before us on a daily basis. It's up to us to open our eyes and see it and never have to be in that position of shock as we reflect back on our ignorance and our denial. We have so much to learn from, of course, this whole scenario and the emotion and the drama of these parashiot of Yosef and his brothers. But the Hachamim point out to us, and the Torah accentuates <coughs> this one emotion of the brothers of Yosef. They were shocked. They couldn't stand before him because of it. Let us take those lessons and never have to experience that shock ourselves.
ברוך הדיין לעולם, אמן ואמן, שבת שלום. שבת שלום.